Welcome back AP Calc students, Mr. Record here. We're going to take a look at our final video covering topic 8.2 about position, velocity, acceleration. We're going to put it all together and we're going to use the idea of nut, our nouns, units, and time to be able to paint a very descriptive picture about what the context is of or what the context is meaning of a particular PVA question. So I've got an interesting little activity here that I think uh, really goes a long way in helping to develop what the meanings are of these symbols in the left column. So it says here the position of a particle moving along the x-axis in feet from the origin is given by x of t. The velocity of the particle in feet per second is given by v of t and the acceleration is given by a of t. For each of the integral expressions given in the following table, interpret its meaning by filling in the missing noun, appropriate units, and or the correct time value or interval. And as I said before, this will really help us better understand how to interpret the meaning of an integral in context. So we're going to start off with the expression x of 2 plus the integration from 2 to 4 of x prime of t with respect to t. Well, the only thing that we're given is that this is at a specific time t equal 4, which is a little surprising because usually an integration problem is interpreted on a time interval, 2 to 4. But in this case, we're just going to be focusing on that upper boundary 4. And the reason is because if we already start with an x of 2, you can think about that as the position at time 2. And then all of a sudden, we just decide to figure out where did the particle go through some displacement on the interval 2 to 4. And we'll find out that we're going to determine where the particle is located in feet from the origin. And so that's your noun and your units. So for your noun, you're going to say the position of the particle. OK. Now, the units are a little interesting because you weren't given anything other than feet, right? But you've got to really throw in the, the idea that we have to have some reference point, right? It's not like it's feet from the ground, like an object moving you know, in, in the air. So we're always going to measure this back to the origin. So our units will be in feet from the origin. And then, of course, you've got your time already built in. And basically, if you were to read this uninterrupted from n to u to t, the position of the particle in feet from the origin at time t equal 4 seconds has a really nice kind of rhythm to it. All right, let's take a look at example 2 here. The integration of x prime with respect to t from 1 to 4. Well, we know that x prime is the derivative of position. So if we integrate position, then we're certainly going to see possibly a, a we're, I'm sorry, we're integrating the derivative of position, which means we're going to get position. But because this is defined on an interval, we could also consider this as being, say, x evaluated at 4 minus x evaluated at 1. Well, there you go. That is a change in position of the particle. Now our units, because we're not worried about measuring this back to any place, here we can just say in feet, right? We're not talking about a position of the particle. We're just talking about like a change in position. A displacement is the same. We don't have to measure it back to the origin. And because this is an interval of time, it's very important that we state so. So we'll say time from time t equal 1 to t equal 4 seconds. All right, let's move on to the third problem. 1 over 4 minus 1 times the integration from 1 to 4 of the absolute value of v of t. A couple of things that you want to be able to extract first of all. The absolute value of v of t is speed. So we're going to go with that initially. We know that's speed. 
And then the combination of the 1 over b minus a integral from a to b should remind you of topic 8.1, which is not all that long ago, which is the average value of a function. So you're looking for the average value of what function? The one that's called speed. So how about we just say in simple plain English, the average speed of the particle. Anytime that you see an integration of absolute value of v with this 1 over b minus a, you're probably looking at average speed every single time. So the average speed of the, let's spell particle right, that'd be nice. The average speed of the particle in feet per second, okay, well, I'll agree with that units, that makes sense. Average, we're kind of talking about over an interval, so you want to add that from t equal 1 to t equal 4 seconds. And if you haven't figured it out by now, this right column is typically going to be at t equals some seconds or the interval uh, from 1 to 4 overall. All right, let's take a look at the fourth one. I think this one could be a, maybe the trickiest. x of 4 plus the integration from 4 up to 2 of v of t. Well, I always get these two confused when I look through this because they look very similar. It looks like we're talking about the position of the particle. Well, I'm not going to deny that. We are definitely the position of the particle here. But because these boundaries are backwards, it, it's a bit frustrating. So here's what I would suggest. Let's pretend that this x of 4 wasn't there for a moment. If we were to integrate the velocity, we get the position. And if you plug 2 in and then subtract and then plug 4 in, you would get something like this, right? Well, if this plus x of 4 was added over, if I added x of 4 over to this other side, then lo and behold, that appears, and this goes away, and what you have this set equal to is indeed x of 2. What is x of 2? It's the position of the particle at time 2. So we're going to write that up. The position of the particle, which if you look at the first one, it is indeed the same language. It's just at a different time. As always, we're going to measure that in feet from the origin. But in this case, it's at time 2 seconds. So it really requires the use of that fundamental theorem of calculus, I think, to decipher that particular result. Perhaps this fifth one was a little familiar, the integration from 1 to 4 of the absolute value of velocity. Remember, this is speed. If you integrate speed, you're always going to get total distance, the particle traveled. And so we'll write it up as such. The total distance... the particle travels. Now we are also going to have to fill in the units for this. So it's probably likely that you're thinking feet, which is certainly correct. Would we say feet from the origin, though, when we're talking about the total distance? And the answer is no. We don't worry about measuring distance from any starting point. It's overall what have we undergone in terms of a of a of a total length of our journey from these two times so you're just going to say in feet and then we'll take care of the interval or see that the interval i guess has been taken care of for us in that third column and last but not least we have the one over four minus a integration from one to four of a of t hopefully you see immediately that those values given in front indicate an average value of a function what function are we trying to find the average value of? The one called a. That's the acceleration. So instead of saying the average value of the acceleration, we can abbreviate that as average acceleration of the particle. Now the other two columns are for us to fill in. Think about acceleration for a moment. What would he be typically measured in? That would be length per time per time, length per time squared. So that would be in feet per second squared in this case, and an average 
acceleration is always going to be uh, on a time interval. Average velocity will be on a time interval uh, as well. So from time t equal 1 to t equal 4 seconds. And that takes care of the table. And once again, a lot of these pieces of information were drawn from the table that you see in your notes on a pre the previous few pages. If you've seen a couple of my other videos, I've kind of alluded to that particular page, which can be extremely, extremely helpful. That takes care of our position velocity acceleration for unit eight. Tune in. Uh, our next uh, group of uh, problems, we're going to focus back on rate in and rate out as we talk about topic 8.3. As always, if you like what you're seeing, be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.